saying to me. I am doing a little something a little different today. All the blue and green moves. That would be the, the moves you got uh, invincibility and invulnerability and intangibility. So in training mode, this is the only way you can see the blue and green moves. This right here. Fighters glow blue with an attack bone hit and glow green with an attack deals no damage. This is the part that I found trips up a lot of people. Blue means you can't get hit right here. Blue means I'm untouchable. Obviously, this is this is spot dodging. Obviously, I'm not going to get touched. But green means you can hit them, but it doesn't do anything. This is intangible. You can't touch them. Not invincible where you can touch them and nothing happens. In fact, I can show you that with the items. Where is it? This one. Green. See, he is hitting me, but it doesn't do anything. This is invincible, invulnerable, whichever. But this one is intangible. He can't touch me. Being blue is not the same as being green. Being blue doesn't mean you are invincible, you are intangible. So, I got a list here of all the stuff. Mario up smash. All kinds of blue. Up special. Starts frame three. The same thing in the air. I also wanted to include, since it's the blue and green move, which is intangibility and vulnerability, I thought I might as well include the super armor moves as well. All of his ground moves except jab are intangible, so up tilt. I don't have it on. There it is. He also got his down tilt, which is... <laughs> He's got some blue goggles on. It has the potential to trip, has good reach, you can sometimes two frame with it, it's... It's pretty good. His forward tilt? His forward tilt's got that reach, no kill power, but obviously you can just kind of whack people off. All of his smash attacks have intangibility on them as well. And his head. Why does his head have intangibility? It just looks wrong. So that means the entire front of him is completely untouchable. His down smash as well. And obviously the up smash. Again with the head intangibility and his floppy disc arms, okay. Most characters, the, the shield isn't just on them. They also get, yeah, like that. A little bit of them. Like specific body parts, usually the head or the, for, the forearm or the arm in front. They get uh, a little bit of blue as well. So this is him getting blue before his shield even gets up. And then once he drops the shield, he comes back. Those are probably the parrying frames. His aerials, it's only got up, up air, but that's that's good. It, here's, it's just so much, so much blue head. His up special actually gets a few frames of intangibility during the spin right there, the first hit, the initial hit. And for the sake of including it, his armor, tons of it, super armor. It's an absolute tank, and uh, well, his up special also it does really well in the air which is probably, you probably uh, came across this issue if you were playing against Donkey Kong. You'd know that he's completely vulnerable from the top of his head, but you still get scooped up by his hands. That's because, yeah, his arms are totally intangible throughout the entirety of it. Yeah, the whole thing. Neutral special, giant punch, right there. So nothing on the windup, but then on the punch itself. There. Intangible arm. But what's interesting is if you have a fully charged giant punch, it's all gone. It's not intangible anymore. He exchanges the intangibility for a hefty amount of super armor. There it is, all that armor. So that means it could be a matchup thing, or it's totally dependent on what you want to do. If you want the intangibility, you just don't charge it fully at all. It's totally dependent on what, what the situation demands, but easily one of the more interesting things is most armor. Side B, headbutt. Now Link has some of the most interesting, intangible, and invulnerable moves in the game. Easily. He doesn't have any. Sam has only, has only got one intangible move, and that's a special. Frame 3 as well as Mario, so that means, yeah, it's great out of shield option. And the same thing in the aerial version, only it's not as long. Everybody's familiar with the Yoshi being as annoying as he is. Well, let's make him even more annoying. Oh, what the hey? Oh, yeah. He said, oh, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is that? He looks like a stupid doll. So his limbs and his, yeah, all of his limbs, ex excluding his tail. Oh, and now, wow. That was all just intangibility. And then his head as he pops out. His up smash has got some intangibility on it right there. 
the whole uh, first half of it. This man's whole forward smash is intangible. That's just dumb. This dude is already annoying enough and they gave him that on the forward smash, by the way. Forward smash being his strongest smash attack. And then his last intangible move is his command grab. Not the actual grabbing, there it is. Whole swallowing animation. And then there's the Chungus, yes, we're familiar. That looks like a tumor. And now he's fat, his armor here. Heavy armor, not super armor. So there's a limit. Right there. For him to get whacked by something like really, really hard, it would uh, just send him nowhere. Kirby was interesting because he doesn't need intangibility, yet he has quite a number of them. His up tilt. I thought this was just an annoying spammable move. What the heck was that? He looked like a protractor. What are you doing? No, no, he's a clock. What time would that be? 5.15. Okay. His basics, he's got his down smash with... Yep, as soon as the animation starts, it's got intangible... Um... They're not legs. His up smash does as well. He's got an intangible up tilt and an intangible up smash. Oh, and th and heh, <laughs> just because just I, I thought it was dumb. So what goes blue when his shield is released? That. A single arm nub. Uh, neutral special? When you got an opponent in your mouth, you're intangible. That's more impressive than I expected. And then he's got his side special, fully charged. Now there's a bunch of stuff here, so... First he has his intangibility. Which means you hit him, you're gonna not hit him at all. But not just that, it also has armor. There it is, there's the armor. And then the down special is heavy armor. And it's important to note that it is heavy armor, not super armor, because... I'm clearly getting hit by his forward smash. Oh, but that's interesting. I actually took less damage than normal. 14.5, right? 29.1, yeah. That's a solid, uh, almost 50% reduction. And right there, I hit the sour spot, so... I get to live another hit. Fox has got his down smash, which would be his legs. Oh, he has a whole line of blue. Okay. And then this one is pretty hard to see. Now there it is. You can look. You see. You see his feet. What is it with this channel and feet? He gets full body intangibility. That's frame two. That's a viable combo breaker right there. Frame two. Uh, Pikachu has got just the one. His thunder, not the actual bolt or the cloud, but when it hits him, and it's quite a long-lasting amount of uh, intangibility as well. It's probably not practical as a, m a move to dodge attacks with, but he gets full body intangibility for a while. So we'll start off with the simple ones, his up smash, the same thing as Mario, full head intangibility. This is what's interesting, you would think it's it would be his, the miss, the, the actual misfire, no, wait, no, green missile, you would think it would be just the misfire. The green missile itself just has startup intangibility. His up special gets a little bit of intangibility as well. Right there. And then his down special, down special, uh, notorious for being a combo breaker. There it is, frame 4, that's what it was. So I could get hit, but it won't take any damage, that's what this is. PK boy over here, he's just, he's got just the one on his, this, this, what would you call it, PK rocket. Yeah, so his entirety of his uh, recovery. So first of all, he's got his up tilt. Uh, this one, this is just stupid, but his up smash, his already overpowered up smash, he's got intangible legs. He does not need that. He could he could he would be just fine with his damage. His side special has some soup on it. Uh, we already know about rest. But what you might not know, Jigglypuff also has got down smash. Is she doing the Yeah she is, okay. And of course rest, which is frame one. Yeah, so. And the and the actual hitbox is frame two. And just so we see how long it is without getting hit. That's a lot. He just got the up smash, her arms and head, and counter, if this is a counter. So there's the, the actual move itself has a few iframes on it, but then when you actually hit someone, you get a few more. Unfortunately, uh, Fungus Queen has not the best counter. Daisy, on the other hand. Nah. And then up smash. Bowser! Okay, this one's gonna be a little interesting. There's a lot of stuff here. Let's get the first one out of the way. Tough guy. Tough guy's gonna tank a ton of the weak attacks. Okay, here we go. Hit me. 
Hit me. Hit me. That was the wrong move. Hit me. Thank you. No, you hit me too hard. Bowser's got tough guy. He's gonna tank all rapid jabs for like a long time. Unlike Donkey Kong, all of Bowser's tilts, including jab, have intangibility. Why does his jab have intangibility? That's just insane. Up tilt. The entire arm intangible. Forward tilt. Intangible. Down tilt. More intent. You're in the way. They're intangible. He's got tilt armor. So he's got his normal tough guy, but then if you're doing a tilt or or a smash attack, you get a little bit extra armor. Just in, just like a percent or less than a percent. But it's there. It's enough to like, instead of Bowser's flinching to these things, right? Right now. But. There it is. He just tanked it with the fourth tilt. And there it is again with the up tilt. Down tilt. Okay, all of his tilts have a little extra armor. Because Bowser needs it. Clearly. See? He couldn't do that on his own. He needs a little armor. Now we go on to his, his smash attacks. Down smash, up smash, and forward smash all have percent based armor. Right, so down smash you can't see any intangibility, but it has a max of 8% armor on it. Yeah, it wasn't even hard. His up smash. Actually, let me just show you his up smash real quick. His whole body is invincible right now. He has full, or his the whole top, his whole shell, invulnerable. And this is not weak either. This is like absolute destruction. It will kill. What the heck was that? Why would he go blue if he's already green? So, who who is under Bowser that they're hitting his belly and missing? Okay, down smash is a max of 8%. His up smash has full shell invulnerability, which means you're gonna beat out everything that comes above you. Even Bowser's own down aerial or his his uh, Bowser bomb. You got that on top of him, you're just gonna... You lose the trade because of his stupid invulnerable shell. This has other 8% on it. There it is. The be all end all of his moves is forward smash. Forward smash has got invulnerable feet. I don't know why it's specifically the feet or why it's such a small area. And it's, it's just the feet, not even like leg, no leg in there at all, it's just all feet. But, invincible feet. And unlike his up smash and down smash, which are already amazing with their 8% armor, this thing has got 10. There it is. That's so extra. There are some people whose jabs don't even do 10. Or most people's jabs do exactly 10. That's, that's dumb. Down aerial, I don't know why Bowser's thing has it here. His underside is intangible, but the move goes down this way. So how are you going to be able to hit him from on top? This doesn't make sense. His underside, which is on top, is intangible when the attack is going down. How are you going to get on top in time to hit him? Because this, this is a fast move. He goes down fast. Who's going to have time to get on top and miss? The whole move has intangibility. All the way through. And on the ground as well. Okay, that, that makes a little more sense. I've currently landed, and now I can get hit. The move is over. That's a lot. In fact, I think it's more than Jigglypuffs. It's up aerial, like Bowser's. It's actually uh, a bunch of this head thing. Oh, wait, wait a second. That that was early. That was early. He has frame three intangibility on his head. That's dumb. Mario's nearest frame three has a combo breaker. Bowser could do this and just whiff, like make make you the opponent whiff early. Tons of armor, or tons of intangibility. Uh, yeah, look, look at this. The intangibility comes out before the attack. Which is normal, I get it, but... Most people's in most characters' intangibility will be there when the attack is there. And then he's got his, his, uh, his side special. But only when you've actually caught a guy. As soon as you've caught him, you're... Jeez, he's still going. There it is. That's a lot. You've probably seen it maybe on the Beefy Smash dudes or somewhere, but the Falco combo, that's why it works, because his entire body is intangible. Nana and Popo, they... Oh, this is a good move, this is a good move, this is... bad. So you've probably been in the middle of a, of a combo and are getting Molly walked all the way to, 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 to death, and then they decide to finish you off with a quick up B. This move is strong. Right? Get up there. That's a fat 20%. So the recovery itself, Nana is 
She's invulnerable frame one. Is then tossed. Actually, no, she's invulnerable for the whole move. Tossed him. And is now invulnerable. I just said invulnerable twice. She was intangible. Now she's invulnerable. Invincible. And she stays invulnerable. All the way up. So I've, I've just thrown an invulnerable projectile. It does 20%. And it's a kill move. That's a really good kill move. Uh, Sheik's only kill move up smash has some intangibility on it. A whole upper body and arms. So I mean, yay. Okay, we, we already know it's a, it's a warp already. The hitbox is gone. But just before you get the full body intangibility. Hey look, I'm doing Sheik combos. No, no I'm not. Delta also has a teleport recovery, so obviously not there to get hit. You may as well not be... Not blue. You can't get hit throughout all of this, obviously. You're warping about. But the actual move itself, so long as you're on... You're visible. With no intangibility. Only once you've actually disappeared is this, like, intangible. But I don't want to include this, because you're not actually blue. When you are actually blue, is when you're actually blue. There it is. Full body intangibility goes blue and gets blue. you think he'd have some similarities between Mario and, and Luigi. Well, actually, you're right, Up Smash has some intangibility on it as well. And then he's got his down special, which has a little bit of heavy armor, so maybe you could uh, tank a hit and a half. Peach has got way more intangibility. He's got like four times as much intangibility. And if you're good at math, you'd know that Pikachu had one. Peach has got four moves, so the Thunder, intangible as soon as it's on impact, down smash. He's just got that little bit of intangibility there. It is, yeah, his ears. This is his shield. He gets ear intangibility. His down aerial, his meteor, one of his greatest moves. Ear intangibility for the meteor part of it. And then we've got his last one, which is his up smash, ear intangibility. Down smash, just like uh, with Fox. Full leg intangibility. Imagine eating those drumsticks. And his up smash. His leg. All leg. And then his second leg. He's got his up special. Active frame 4, his whole startup. He's got two frames of uh, intangibility. But it's way better in the air. Frame 1. Intangibility in the air. For way longer as well. And of course his counter. Unlike Peach, I can probably show this one. There. Throughout the entire counter move, he's intangible. Gosh, this is dramatic. There it is. And now he's... Now he's... Hittable. We've got whoop. We've got D, and we've got do. Put them together, and what do you got? Whoop de do. Oh, okay. This one, this one's pretty cool, actually. This one is actually impressive. Uh, young Link. So you you were you probably uh, thought, okay, Link sucks. Obviously, he he's got nothing. But then you come to Young Link. Young Link actually has the best ones in the game. Nothing. No blue moves, no blue moves, it's all super armor. So first we've got his, uh, it's called Warlock Punch, and it just lasts forever. No, no armor on early startup. But then once he's wind up, and he smacks you. Yep, there's just, there's a lot of armor here. And he's, this is me holding shield. Why does his tiny itty bitty head have a little bit of intangibility? But then when I let go, his arm has intangibility. That's just weird, okay. His flame choke on the ground. There it is, armor. That is super armor as well, not heavy armor. Uh, he's got a teleport, so that's obvious intangibility, but he doesn't go blue, so it doesn't count. Disable. His down special. This move has quite a lot of intangibility on it. Up until the attack comes out. Up smash, he's got intangibility on his arm. I don't know why he'd need intangibility on his arm, he's got a perfectly nice sword right next to it. His down B is counter. There. His up special on the ground. Okay, where is it? There it is. The intangibility comes out really late. But, and it's one frame. That, where, how is this useful? Why does he have this? This, this is nothing. However, it does have a itty bitty bit of armor. This, there it is. That was not it. Nope. There it is. Some nice super armor on that. Got the aerial version, which has another very pitiful amount of one frame intangibility. Why, why even bother? Why even give him anything? Just to cover all bases. He's got his up smash with his 
his intangible arm right there. There it is. I think then he got his down special. It's the counter. What did you expect? His up special has got uh, some soup on it, but no intangibility. So there it is. He also has super armor in the air. He just zoinked out of there. There's the armor, right? It's all in the rising, not in the actual scoop. But Game Watch already has excellent moves. He's already got combos damage. He's also got nine. That was a three. But he's got really good stuff for some reason. This this was just bizarre. Why does his up tilt not only have this awkward intangibility on what looks like his mitts, but then he's got it on the whole arm in his, his up tilt. Up tilt is intangible. Why? He doesn't need this. It's already a, a flag. He has intangibility on an intangible object. What the heck is that? This is his up smash, which is full body invulnerability. So you're gonna hit him and do nothing. That's that's what this is, and it's just it just stays. It's that's long time. I know it looks like it's not that long, but that's that's a long time for an in invulnerable move. <sighs> up special, just quick palette swap mid fight. Where'd he go? And now he's just chilling and of course it's the same thing in the air this was actually interesting this one like i get it but i don't get it his absorb with the bucket when he scoops up a thing he gets full body intangibility for like a good while too meta knight this doesn't count oh yeah it does so nothing uh he had like a frame of intangibility just before he vanished but then when he reappears he's blue as well up tilt. If I could... Meta Knight, help me out, bro. There it is. I'm looking at Game & Watch. Ignore that. It was just down special. Meta Knight's done. Next. The Pits. If the name tells you anything, they don't have much either. His up special. I thought it was just really good. It turns out it has a little bit of intangibility on startup. And then he just cruises. Actually, that's, that's a lot. The whole charge. Why are there so many colors there? But and he doesn't get the wind up, he just has the blast off. His only kill move. There it is. Tons of super armor. Whoop de doo. Yippee. Wait, nope. Oh. There's Yippee. And then, of course, my favorite part hurting myself. Next, her flip kick. It's just the first half. Wario, you would think he'd have a little bit more stuff. No, he's... Oh, and if you thought Luigi's head was small in the Mario Brothers, the actual Marios, there are two of them, was a big head, you ain't seen nothing yet. This may as well be full body intangibility. Right now his head could eat his body. This is some... That's... The, this big brain, and then there's medical condition. I probably don't need to show it actually, but his, his down B, his waft, has super armor when I'm fully charged. And this is the reason I felt like I had to clear up the indifference between intangibility and vulnerability. Being green means you get hit, but it doesn't do anything. Being blue means you get, you can't get hit. Invulnerability, intangibility. This is sometimes referred to as invincibility. But the reason I want to clear that up is because I noticed Alpharad was talking about the dash attack and how it has some uh, I think he called, he said it was invincible. It is intangible. And not even the front half of him, it's just his arms and head. That doesn't make the move any less good. But it was an inaccuracy, I just I just had to clear up. Actually, no, I didn't, but I wanted to. And then we've got his up special, which has, which has a little bit of uh, armor on it. I'm gonna... There it is. He's got the one blue move. Can you guess what it is? That's right, it's counter. You win a medal. Wait, did his, did his head have lingering intangibility? Yeah, it does. Why? The sword is down there. And it's still there. What, what are you doing, Ike? Is it because the counter is on the sword, not his head? Why not just extend the counter to his head, then? That way his whole body is counter-ready. That's just weird. Now he looks stupid. It's up special. Tons of armor on that. Tons of armor, on, on the only on the start, before he rises, so this is all armor right here. For his next trick, he will use a volunteer. This is gonna hurt. I'm in pain right now. 
I'm, I'm seeing a therapist. That has lots of armor, but only on the second pillar charge and third pillar charge. Can you guess what move it is that has intangibility? Forward tilt. In other words, his spammable move. And then he's got his awkward shell armor. There it is. But then you get bounced back. You don't. You take zero damage, so it's as good as a super armor. It, it has its consequences. Now we've got Ivysaur. <laughs> uh, are you familiar with uh, anything like this, maybe? It was intangible. Why does one of the strongest up smashes in the game also have intangible? Well, I guess there's Bowser. But Bowser's different. The up smash has intangibility on the, on the foliage. And maybe you've been uh, spammed by his up air before. Guess what else also has intangibility? For two frames, granted, but it's also intangible. His stupid, spammable, killable up smash has intangibility on it. Charizard, let's let's just get it over with forward smash. Yeah, so. This guy's this heavy, so most of the a bunch of the other heavies. We already had uh, Donkey Kong with his forward smash and tangibility, Bowser with his uh, invulnerability, and uh, Charizard's though I think is one of the dumb. I think no, it is the dumbest intangible move or for the heavies to have on a smash attack. This looks like that. Why even bother skipping the leg? His entire everything except his one chunky. His wind-up looking leg, looking like a dinosaur, Some, his brontosaurus back leg doesn't have it, but the rest of him is totally intangible, which means you would have to hit his, 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 his baby fat leg behind him to actually hit him, but this move pushes him forward, which means it pushes you forward, which means there's no way for you to get that back leg. So he's fully intangible right now. He's still intangible. He's now hit you. He's still intangible. Still intangible. Well, this doesn't count because it's lingering. Now we've returned to the normal frame data. Intangible. He's now at full neck, and now it's over. And also the attack, the hit, the hurt box has disappeared. That's a lot. Okay, like here, Mario's in the strike zone to get hit by an intangible move that sweeps low in sometimes two frames. It's so dumb, but like good. And it's like strong, it's got reach, it's sometimes two frames, I'm hitting Mario a lot because this is fun. He's got the same up air as Bowser and Donkey Kong, so it makes sense for him to have the head intangibility like the others two. But yeah, just his head, not even his neck, despite it being, you know, very important here. Evident by that frame. Side special has super armor. Do I even need to show it? We all know it has super armor. Throughout the entire move is super armor. Not at the start, but once he's traveling, once he's cruising through, through the thing, he's got super armor. Then he's got his up special, also with tons of super armor. On the ground and on the air, lots of super armor. Diddy Kong is, uh... Well, well, tell me if you've heard this one before. None. He has two moves that have anything that go blue or green, but it's the moves that have them that is just stupid. So you, this, you probably already would expect this. Take a thunder, full body, intangibility, he just kind of flies off. Yeah, he's only intangible at the start of it. But this is when it gets dumb, his up smash. This guy. He has frame one invulnerability on up smash. He hasn't even done the attack yet. Full body invulnerability. Three frames of full body invulnerability on that attack. Just remember, the attack didn't come out yet. Now the attack has come out. This is frame one of release. Full body invulnerable. Two, three, four. Three frames. And then, and then, <laughs> I forgot. After the invulnerability is out, just before the attack comes out, it then switches to intangibility. He's had his invulnerability on frame one of charging the move for three frames. He's then frame one released it, which is another three frames of invulnerability. The green is gone, it's now switched back into intangibility, all the way until he's released the move. This is an excellent move, and it's so dumb that he has it. Sonic's up smash. There it is. So the rising and the startup, he has intangibility. This is intangible, he's a little bit blue now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six frames of intangibility, not armor, it is not armor. There, yeah. You don't need to fully charge it. Up special. Four, five, frame five, he has intangibility for three frames. Full body intangibility at that. It's the same thing in the air. This up tilt has an intangibility on it. This is a combo move, kill move, and it reaches far in front of him. And he's got a big head, which means lots of intangibility, and he's now his arm is intangible. Neutral special, so just like with Kirby, when you inhale the guy, once they got in your maw, 
intangible that he's currently swallowing. Oh, now they swallowed him. You're still intangible, even though it looks like he's just ready to be popped like a balloon. This move has frame one armor. Stop special. You know what else? Stop special has has intangibility. Look at this. There it is, full body intangibility. So yeah, the startup of his rising, he's got intangibility things all the way up top, and then his feet. Why does his feet need intangibility? The hitbox is is already there. Yeah, blue feet all the way down, and also armor. There's the armor, and he's dead. Next would be Olimar. Olimar has no blue or green moves, but he does have a little bit of super armor on his down bit. And it is super armor, so that happens. Very cool. Lucario doesn't have anything either, but he does have a couple frames, there it is, of intangibility on his counter, just like all the others. It's nothing really special, but I mean, it's all fancy and stuff. And then he shows up from behind. He literally teleports behind you. Does a very long kick, and then he goes on with his day. Rob, Rob one, Rob's one was kind of interesting because it's kind of weird that he has it, but his up special on the ground has a little bit of intangibility on it. To frame two for three frames, frame two for three frames, he has intangibility, and it does not work in the air. There. Only on the ground. Toon Link. And now, finally, after bragging and bagging on the Links for so long, he still has nothing. Wolf. Wolf. Basta. Basta. Wolf. Just like with, uh, with, uh, with Fox, I think it was. His down B got... There it is. Some intangibility. Just for... That little while, there you go. And then he's back to a punching bag. This one is interesting because it wasn't always this way. He'll just up tilt to get some intangibility on him. Which is his, uh... Where, where, come on. There you go. There it is, his whole head and his arm. Pretty sure it used to just not have the head. Oh, and his other thing is, of course, pocket. So much intangibility for so long, a great pseudo air dodge. Or just pseudo dodge in general. Just that it has a bit more lag on it. Now, Mega Man's pretty overpowered because he's blue all the time. On his down tilt, he's got them, his, his heels light up, his whole ankles. His up tilt, there it is. Three frames of intangibility. Before the whole move comes out, he's got his up special. But this is only grounded. He gets those four frames of intangibility. He does not get that in the air. Oh, he does. Oh, I didn't. It was it was right. It was like literally right under the thing that said one, two, three, four frames on the ground and one, two, three, four. Yeah, refit trainer. He she uh, gets some intangibility on up tilt, which makes it a great anti-air. Oh, it gets intangibility before the arm even shows up, but there you go. Full on intangible arm. Her up smash gets blue as well. Oh, full body intangibility. So that's pretty effective. Rosalina gets intangibility on her up tilt. On her head. Which is kind of awkward, but I guess since that's what she's hitting with Mario hits with the hand, that makes sense his hand would get intangible, but she's using her head. What a weirdo. Speaking of up smashes, I didn't, no one did actually, but up smash gets intangibility on her head as well. The whole thing, lots of it. Lots and lots of intangible head. Little Mac. This one's gonna be a bit interesting, because he's got quite a bit of stuff. So let's just start off with uh, some of the easy stuff that we already know. He's got armor on all his smash attacks. There's that great armor there. It's only when the move comes out. There it is. But not not when he's charging up or nothing. There it is. Oh yeah, and you get you get a quick special zoom if you if you hit him with the uh, after armoring an attack. That's fun. He's got intangibility on his side special. That would be Jolt Haymaker. Oh wow. 
on the start of it, and then it goes, his whole body gets intangible, and then it goes to just his legs. For... what well, looks like... yeah, for the first half of it. That's frame one. Frame one intangibility on Joel Taymaker. That's pretty good. He gets none of it in the air, though. This move... oh, well, the armor builds up, of course. Okay, so... it's heavy armor, it looks like. But still... Or, the, or maybe it's percentage or knockback based. Either way, he's got he's got a pretty good amount of, of armor on that. His up special, his only recovery, he gets some uh, frame one intangibility, and then for three frames. So that's a good out of shield option, though it's also not because he sucks in the air. He also does get uh, intangibility on the air as well, version as well for the first three frames. And then just like all the others before him. Counter, frame 3 intangibility. His count, his counter, oh, what? he looks like he got hit. But in actuality, he hit you. It doesn't do much damage. And it's really short-lived as well. The intangibility just ends as soon as it starts. Greninja, just like a bunch of the others, his intangibility is on, is on, is on, is on his counter. Oh, it, it goes from his body to his head and his feet. Or foot, rather. Just the one foot. But like a lot of his head, because as you can see, like, the fingertips are blue. That looks weird. That looks really weird. Greninja's got a weird counter, because he can change the direction he attacks, but, you know, it's still mostly the same way. Oh wait, it's Greninja. There, there he shows up. And there's his intangibility. Then he can show up, kick you in the face, and then just move on like nothing ever happened. There it is. There's his dive downwards. He can also hit you upwards. Oh wow, he actually gets a whole lot of height from this. Now because the brawler is customizable, this is a, the, a little bit finicky to work with. But the one thing that they will always share is Up Smash has intangibility on the leg. For a decent portion of the move. The other one he's got is Neutral Special 2. This thing. But it, it only works when you get somebody. And as soon as you get him, full body invincibility. His up special, his second up special, the helicopter kick, he gets... His legs go intangible for basically the whole thing, in the ground and in the air. Down special two, which is uh, that. It's like zero suits down special, bouncing fish, the faint... No, wait, no, that's sheep. Huh? This is flip kick. But yeah, he gets this intangibility on his on his feet. Only on the startup, though. Now we've got his second or his third down special, the exploding kick thing, which has some armor on it. There it is, but only at the end of it. And this works in the air and on the ground. Yeah, during the kick. There it is. Yeah, there's your intangibility on his on his on his neutral special. Not intangible. His armor. What the heck? His armor. His armor. Down special three, which is to nobody's surprise. Counter, which of course has intangibility. It has to, it's a counter. And lastly, we've got up special three, which is this thing, which has intangibility on his arm. Like he's he's out of frame. Get back! I can't I can't see. And he gets it in the air as well. None of uh none of the first special moves. Only twos and threes have blues or greens or armor. And absolutely nothing is on side special. Next, we've got me sword fighter. Blue and green moves aren't so generous on all uh, on the other two me fighters. Oh, so me brawler, he's got he's got plenty. He's got his up smash. He's got his special moves. So he's good to go. Me sword fighter also has some, but it pales in comparison to the brawler. He's got up special one, 
which is this thing. Which also works in the air. He gets quite a bit of this intangibility. He's also got down special one, which is, uh, wouldn't you know it, it's, it's a counter with intangibility. Wow, so impressive. He's got nothing on his neutral specials, or his side specials, his second down special, but it only works when you hit your opponent, so this thing. And then he gets blue. You get some intangibility. So I guess when they're about to hit you, you do this, you reflect them, and then even if they were about to hit, even if they were or could have hit you, they just can't now. That's all he's got. That's all the sword fighter has got. We've got the me gunner, who in a very unfortunate turn of events has nothing. The brawler just took everything, leaving nothing for the sword fighter or the gunner. That greed got the best of him. palutena has got some pretty dumb moves. Forward tilt. What does she need intangibility on? And forward tilt her arm. Obviously, it's not like this giant staff takes care of that or nothing. Dash attack. Dash attack is we've all know we all know how good this is. The full upper body intangibility, and then it just lingers on the shield and the arm for a bit longer. It's good. Back aerial. She uses the shield again, which is why she gets some more invincible back air. So dumb, and it's fast. Like. Is dumb fast. And then of course she's got a counter, which of course means full body intangibility. Palutena's counter? Well that's the reflector, so you gotta be up close and personal to to, to make a make it hit. There we go. And blast them away. Full body intangibility. Pac-Man! Why is he here in Smash Brothers? I don't know. I guess he, he saw food, he thought that was food, and he showed up, he's like, where's the food? Got up tilt intangibility though. So like, eh, it goes nowhere though, so good luck anti-airing with something that can barely reach anyone. Okay, let me just... It's pretty quick though. Got him. Then he's got a side special, which is interesting, because as soon as he eats the pellet, he gets full body super armor. There's some, well, he armored it, yeah, he took 24. There it is. Great super armor. Now he got Reuben. Whoop de doo. We've got some Reuben up in here. But alas, he doesn't get much. He's only got some intangibility on his down special, Nosferatu. And even then, it's only when he's caught an opponent. There it is. Some tangibility. And then it's only for once he's caught him. After that, it's, it's over. That's all he's got. First, we'll do the simple one down special. He's got his counter, which of course will have his intangibility for a little. Oh, that was very short-lived. His thing. Oh, great intangibility. He has to take the whole time to do all this stuff. And then he's got his other one, which is his arts. As soon as it's activated, he gets quite a bit of intangibility. A good portion of that animation. And we'll just cancel that, and then we'll just have him select one. And as soon as he selected, yeah, frame one uh, intangibility. Bowser Jr. does not get blues or greens. He does get a little bit of armor, though, on his side B, his clown cart, whatchamacallit, dashing him off, wrecking, causing some mayhems. Well, he armored that. But more than that, he also can armor a little bit more if you get the spin. It's not super armor, it's heavy armor, but he definitely does have armor. And we've got Duck Hunt. Duo, because there's two of them. He's got none. Rio, okay, Rio, Rio, Rio. This guy, he's a little bit tricky to, to deal with. Not gonna lie. Yeah, this this is why his command inputs gets gets him a little extra special stuff. So start off simple up tilt, heavy up tilt, which is not the tap, it's the hold. He's then got his up smash on his arm. This is intangible arm. For, for quite a bit, honestly. It's, it's a long time. His up air has intangibility. 
on the arm again. Really liking that arm of his. His up special on the ground gets intangibility. For a single frame, so good luck finding any use for that. It also happens in the air for that one frame again. But if you were to do the command input, which is forward, down, down, forward, there it is. He gets intangible arm before the move even starts and then gets full body intangibility and then it goes to his arm again. All okay for a good good rise. And then do it again. When he does it in the air, it's basically the same thing. Uh, side special. Gets intangible legs. For the whole thing. Also, wait, this is the tap, and then this is the hold version. Yeah, he gets tons of intangibility on his legs. This is the command input version, it's basically, it's exactly the same. It's just that now it's stronger. 15, 18, yeah. And then he's got his down special, which is weird. According to how, how what they sell us, it can tank the first hit. Because it can tank a single hit, but it also can't tank everything. That's breaking through the armor. But if I charge it enough, then he'll tank it. So the the suit that one hit super armor scales depending on how how long you charge it. Next up, we've got Ken, who is way more difficult and weird to deal with. He's got awkward command inputs. So first things first, we've got up tilt heavy, which is the hold version. It's clone of Ryu. Of course, he's gonna have the same thing, not the tap, but the hold. When you when you're when you're up close to someone's face, you can hold. I, I don't get the character. Okay, so this is weird to me. But when you're, when you're, when you're at point blank, so not far away, where well, you can do this, but like right up in their face, you do this, and this move gets him an intangible uh, upper half. I, I don't know why this works, but it clearly really is like a, a little max forward smash angle down does all the damage, but sends them nowhere. I always thought I saw people doing this because it's the same animation. Very clearly, it's the same animation. But one is jab, one is an up tilt. Then we've got forward tilt, but when you tap it, they give your leg intangibility. I'm not sure why the light version gets intangibility, but the heavy version doesn't. Up smash, up smash has intangibility on the arm. Then we've got side special, which is the same kick, but here's what's different. The attacking leg doesn't get intangibility. The, sp the pivoting leg does. So Ryu, both legs got it, but for Ken, it's the one that stays on the ground. Doesn't matter if it's command input either. It just they just don't give him intangibility. It also works in the air. Oh wait, hold the phone. The aerial version switches it. Now the attacking leg gets intangibility, but the pivoting leg doesn't. That's weird, man. On the ground, it's the pivoting leg, the one that stays on the ground. In the air, it's the attacking leg, the one that rotates around him. Oh, his up special. The normal shore you can get that one frame of intangibility, which probably means he gets that same one in the air as well, same like Ryu. But his he's known for his fire one, and that one is exactly the same. But then we've got the command input version, which is uh, yeah, that same the same way it works. That first frame intangibility on the arm, to fo followed by full body intangibility, returning to intangibility on the arm again and it works in the air as well the same way whether it's on fire or not maybe yeah on fire it's exactly the same when it's on fire it switches arm full body arm this this that that one right there this crescent kick i believe it's called which is a uh, quarter circle forward Whatever, this this move. This move gets an intangible leg. And then, and then of course, he's got the same uh, focus attack, can tank the first hit, but can't but can tank stronger hits depending on how long it's charged. Yeah. Cloud has got intangibility on a couple moves. He's got his down tilt, just like a, just like a Mega Man, except for him, it's only on the one leg and on the knee, it looks like. Not the part of it that actually matters, which would be... The, the one on the ground, the extended foot. His intangibility is on all his specials, but only when he's got his limit. So first things first, we've got ourselves some uh, limit blade beam on the ground. There's some intangibility. All the way until the move is just shot out of him. And it works the same way in the air. 
There goes that blade beam. He's then got his side special limit cross slash. There it is, intangibility. Only for the start though, the rest of the move is as normal. And then he's got his up special limit climb hazard, which has this scoop and rise, and that works the same way in the air. Scoop and rise. Only his limit and his down tilt. Corin has a few moves. First things first is the pin jump. There you go. Some intangibility on him, but only on the build up. Down special is a counter, so of course that'll have some intangibility on it. The dragon counter, which has the vertical reach. They don't show any blues or greens, I guess you just have to assume they're invincible. Oh, but there, there, you see that? It was. As soon as the dragon transformation ends, turns back into the human form and gets a little bit of intangibility during it. Then you've got up special from the ground. There we go, full body intangibility on the charge just before the ascent. And of course that works the same way in the air. Bayonetto. Bayonetta has not been so lucky with the blues and greens draw. All she's got is her down B. Her counter, which is that, which is, that's funny because she's in And that's all she's got, only for like the first roll. But it's a pretty long time because, oh yeah, because it turns from uh, the counter into the bat within thing. This should be incorrectly timed. There we go, bat within shows up. Shows, and then she comes back. So bat within is nothing. But what isn't nothing is which time, which time, which time actually, yeah, no. She gets full intangibility for the entire backflip now. And then she gets it a little bit after. So you can continue doing the flip or you can stop, but you'll still be uh, intangible afterwards. Now we move on to the Smash Ultimate newcomers. Starting with Inkling. Now, Inkling was the one to reveal Smash Bros. 5, so it makes sense for her to have absolutely nothing. Ridley, on the other hand. Ridley has actually got a couple intangible moves, starting with Up Tilt. Spammable, does good damage, can kill at better percents. The whole head, uh, arm, and wing. Then it stays on the wing, intangible, so spammable, comboable, good damage. Up smash, I feel like people don't realize how good uh, his up smash is. It reaches really far behind him and in front of him. Does good damage, a good hit, pretty quick, kills. And it's intangible, with excellent reach as well. It's a good move. People should be using this more often. Down special, the skewer, but not exactly the skewer itself. It has to be a skewer with the hit and killed him. There we go, full body invincibility. During this I've got you now phase. We've got up special, up special, angled up. And this is actually, this, act, this part actually matters. Up special, angled up, the tips of the wings get intangible, which is why it's so difficult to beat. Up special, angled forward, which is the one where he dips forward and down. It's the same thing, the wing tips again. Up special length of backwards, which is when he goes back into up. Tip of the wings. However, he does not get any intangibility when it's angled down, which is the only time he uses his foot instead of his wings. But this becomes a very devastating meteor, and it's a meteor throughout the entire move. No intangibility. Simon is pretty lackluster, he's pretty pretty bland, kind of unfortunate. He got his he gets his upbeat. His knife rising thing, there it is. He gets blue on the start of it, which would make this a good out of shield option. Frame 5, intangibility for 2 frames, and then he just rises with the knife. It works the same way in the sky. See, it's so fast, you don't even see it. There we go, 2 frames of intangibility on upbeat on the ground, 2 frames of intangibility on upbeat in the air, and then he's done. King K. Rule. He's important. Why? Because he's got belly armor. Belly armor is his super armor with a limit of, well, you can take it for a while. But starting off, we've got Side Taunt, which is a belly armor. So you get to mock your opponent while taking their hit and being unaffected, well, mostly unaffected. He's also got his forward tilt for some belly armor on it as well, if I could just. There it is. But only when he sticks it out, so it's kind of difficult to get this this area right here because his whole move is pretty fast and like his clap is fast, he just beat out the, the fireball. It's pretty strong. He's got his up tilt, which is a very quick move, very quick kill move, good vertical reach, uh, intangibility, 
on the whole arm the whole time. Decent power, decent reach, decent verticality. It's a pretty good move. And you got his down smash, the the most infamous move of his of all of all time. It is the K rule move. His down special, his down smash. What is his down smash has got armor, but I don't know how I'm gonna hit it with this. You know what? It also works as a dodge, of course. So. There it is, there's the armor. Up smash, very fast up smash. Frame 6, good power, good verticality, good reach, and an intangible head. And then he falls. Also, 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 also. Where is it? Come on. Okay, we'll do it this way then. There it is. He gets some belly armor in front of him as well. Dash attack has got some belly armor on as well. Strong move, fast move. Boom! Just power through. He's got his neutral air. Another big old belly armor move, only in front of and a little under him. But if I can get it, there it is, some belly armor being used right there, right there. There it is, down aerial, which is a little bit tricky to, to, you know, let the belly armor get hit, but it is there. Okay, we're doing it this way. There it is, belly armor, up aerial, which has intangibility on his head. Oh, big squat. Intangibility on the head for a good while. It's also got belly armor. But intangibility plus fast move plus strong move. It's... You're gonna... There we go. You're gonna hit them with the move before they hit your armor. Down special. Which, though the counter works only in front of him, he gets full body intangibility. For a good while, honestly. Pretty good. Oh, he gets full—he gets full body invincibility for his counter. The others go intangible. K. Roll goes invincible. He's got his side special, which has heavy armor, which has since been buffed. So there's a lot of armor here, a lot of it. Look at that! Nothing happened at all during all of that. He hit me with two fireballs. I didn't even react. His neutral special. The blunderbuss, but not the cannon itself, not even the inhaling, but you gotta inhale the opponent, and then, well, the opponent goes blue. And that's, that's what's funny. That's what it is. It's a weird move, it's, it's a move that turns your opponent blue. Isabel, Isabel, not so lucky, not even her up tilt has uh, blue and blue, blue doesn't go blue. She's only got her pocket a move, which is not even her. She robbed that from Villager, and that's all she's got. Incineroar is gonna hurt you. Starting with up tilt, which is intangibility on his head. So this is combo move, good reach. Yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna hurt you a long time. Down tilt as well, that's why it's so useful to two frame opponents with it, because the whole legs, both of them, go intangible and it scoops under, so it's very easy to two-frame with them and then combo that into the forward tilt. He's got his up smash, which gives him intangible arms, and it reaches all the way behind him as well. He's got his neutral special, which is the most interesting of his moves. Frame 5, full body invincibility, and then his arms are invincible for the whole thing. He's got his up special, which gives him intangible arms on the rising, but not on the fall. It's decent heavy armor. His side B, not the move itself, but well, it does have it has it's got heavy armor. There it is. There's my heavy armor. Yeah, when he's caught a guy, yeah, once he's caught someone, it's it's heavy or it's heavy armor the whole way through. Even all the way up to the 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 victory animation that he does. There it is. I got a little bit of armor, even though I was the move was over. I could have done a shield, but instead I did a victory pose on him. Also, his revenge counter does not give him intangibility because it's not a normal counter. Piranha Plant. He's got forward tilt, intangibility on his teeth, which is very specific to him, but only on the first part. Only the first bite, not the second one. His up tilt, though, full head intangibility. He gets to look weird the whole time. His forward smash. He gets an intangible head during the important parts of it. Important, the important swing. His up smash 
gets intangibility on the head during the charge, the rise, and the chomp. He's got his up air, which is comboable. It combos, good landing lag, and sometimes kills. He gets an intangible head during this, just like the others. Bowser, Donkey Kong, Charizard, they all get it. This, this move is the intangible head move. He's got his down special. This is fully charged. Which gives him an intangible head when he shoots out at you. And it's got a little bit of, of armor on it as well. Heavy armor. And now this one is a little bit tricky and extremely unlikely to ever, 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 ever happen. But it's in the game, so... You know, footstool attack. So not this. It's only when Plant is crouching. He gets intangibility on his head for just a second. Then we get the footstool. Trying to Plant doesn't like that. So you get intangible for just a second, but then I get intangible as you do. And then I get to keep it for just a little bit longer, just long enough to, to nip your butt. And that's that's just what he has. And that's that's the plan. The final line, the last eight characters. Joker's weird, he's got his Arsene stuff. So first of all, uh, neutral special, he wields a gun. But he can also dodge with this gun. And when he dodges with this gun, he goes intangible. For a good while, and then he shoots you again. But you, of course, you, the, you can only do this, what, three times? Four times? Oh, yeah, you can only do it four times. He can also jump with his neutral special, he wields a gun. Mario is freaking out each frame. And when he does, he goes intangible for the rising part of the jump, and then he... He rains lead and hellfire upon you. His down special. So not on its own like when he when he absorbs the move and once he's you know in those i'm absorbing phases if he then goes to attack that little thing that he does he gets a little bit of he gets a intangibility during that this right there that attack he gets some intangibility during it And now we go to the fun stuff. Where is he? Arsene shenanigans. First off, we've got his uh, up special, or first off, he's got his, his, his Arsene counter. This time, he does get intangible without needing to get hit. He's also now got a new up special, which grants him... Frame 1 intangibility, which then lets him soar up, wow, is he, okay, all of that was intangibility, for like the first half of his flight, he's fully intangible, including the, the charge on the ground, which is a frame 1 intangibility move as well. And this move, of course, works in the air, it's more like, okay, it's more like a frame 2, frame 3 intangibility, but it works the same way in the air. And that, that's all he's got. Hero. So first things first, his normal move is forward tilt. He's got an invincible short, or shield. Well, not even not even the shield, just him and his leg. His head is first, his, his arm and his leg. And then his arm for a little bit longer. So you can be out certain attacks with that, but only the first part of forward tilt. The rest of it has nothing. He's got his side special, which is the fully charged one, which gives him... Oh, it's a heavy armor. That's a shame. His shield can, like, beat out... There it is. Okay, here we go. This one is gonna take some doing. There it is. Ka clang There you go. Full body invincibility. That was it. Next we've got the last one. There it is. Kamikaze. Kamikaze has frame one intangibility and then you're intangible throughout the entirety of it because it does too much damage and it costs one MP. Of course you die. Banjo Kanzui. What? Wow. That's not your name. Banjo and Kazooie have uh, much simpler moves, 
we've got his up special grounded up special on the ground which gives him those three frames of intangibility and they work the same way in the air three frames of intangibility and then we've got his side special which is just full green we know it's green it's big old green we're in the green this is green it's green day now here we've got some interesting moves Terry's got some weird stuff up tilt he's got an intangible arm during up tilt there he's got his forward tilt intangibility on his leg and this of course can combo into stuff he's got his spot dodge count there it is intangibility on his whole upper body and also it's you might not be able to see it super well but once as soon as the move starts his whole his full body is intangible for just a little bit we've got his down beat the command input version which is the sure you can command forward down down forward gives him rising intangibility forward special which would be uh, this forward a circle forward down down forward forward He gets his his arm is intangible during. Up special, up B. Up B on the ground, he gets intangible legs. During almost basically all of it. And he also gets intangible legs in the air as well. But what you really want is to charge it. You just basically hold down for a whole second. You can do this during anything as long as your control stick down. And then you up B, you get full body intangibility it's much stronger and then it goes back to only a leg intangibility you also look different you kind of like get this sparkly effect on you and that works in the air as well and now we get to the fun parts go go juice first he's got his buster wolf which is down forward down forward which gives him intangibility on his arm his charging arm then once you've hit your opponent both of you go intangible Fully intangible. And then once once uh, once you've been hit, once you've done the hit, Terry remains intangible while you suffer the consequences. And he looks like he stays intangible for quite a bit. Also gives him just a little bit of super armor. I can just hit it. There it is. Power geyser, which is down, back, down, forward. Doesn't get blue or green. But it does get a tad bit of armor. There it is. Violet does not get much. In fact, Violet gets only one move, which is in the form of down special. This move gets her gets him her super armor, but only at the when the move is about to be released. Anytime during or at the start of it gets nothing. There it is, there's tons of super armor. And also, it has to be only on the ground. He has to start on the ground and or no. The armor is only on the ground, however, if you were to start from the air and then land on the ground, you get your armor back, which is different to Ganondorf. Ganondorf has to be on the ground for the whole thing to get his super armor. Byleth just needs to be on the ground for the ending half of it. There's the armor. And Byleth does not get any armor during the air. There it is. You don't get super armor in the air. Min Min is a little bit. Actually, no. She got kind of lucky on the on, on the on the blue and green draw up smash, which gives her leg intangibility. Well, to both of her legs and then one of her legs, but it's for the whole thing. And this move is also that reflector of hers. Down smash. The only other her, another leg move gives her leg intangibility, which makes it good for two framing if you can do that. It's also quick, very quick. Down tilt, another leg move, which gives her both her legs intangible. And very surprisingly, Nair gets intangibility on it. Because it's it's surprising considering these her her arm thing, the whole gimmick behind her is that the arms are like throwing a projectile at your opponent. They are in itself already intangible, but for some reason they decide to give this blue. It also isn't just like uh, normal narials, it also works with special errors, regardless of what it's what you're using. It's just that, well, for this one, you can see the blue is much smaller than the the arm itself. And then lastly, we've got her up special, but only on the ground. She gets a quick uh, moment of intangibility, full body intangibility for a couple frames. This is chargeable. Oh, so without a charge, you get full body intangibility right away. But when you do take the moment to charge it, 
your hands go intangible a few frames before, uh, quite a number of frames before your your full body goes intangible. The last two until the next DLC. When the next DLC comes, I'm gonna just do the last of them all at once. Steve is weird. His side special gives him a little bit of heavy armor. There it is. And lastly, we've got the one-winged angel himself, Sephiroth, who's got pretty, pretty lucky on the drop as far as a character with a sword that looks like this goes. So first off, we've got his up tilt, which already is enormous, but it wasn't good enough, I guess, because they also give him full upper body intangibility. Look at that. The sword already reaches kingdom come. We've got his down special, which on itself doesn't do anything. Hit them as soon as you the the counter activate, you get your intangibility there. One winged angel damage. So first things first, super armor on all his uh, all his smash attacks. Okay, it's heavy armor, not super armor. If it was super armor, he wouldn't be dying. But all of his smash attacks have plenty of super of heavy armor on them, and it's good heavy armor at least. It'll last him a good while. Mithra's got neutral special. She's always had neutral special. You just do it this way. Bam! Look at that. That is amazing, but what's truly amazing is this, when you fully charge it, she gets two rounds of intangibility. Where, where are you? There's the first one on the first slash, but then comes in a second one, a backup slash. So you can actually see not just this, but the whole character way more in depth if you check out my little tutorial I did. It's not little at all, it's very small, but or very big, but a bunch of stuff happens in it. And you might find something uh, worth learning in Foresight, this thing that she does. That was not Foresight. There it is. Yeah, but it's a weird timing, it's a slowdown thing you get. You take half damage and now they're slowed down and you are able to do everything you want. It's like if parrying was on crack. And the last thing she's got is down special. She turns into Pyra. Where are you at? Where are you at? There you are. It's like a really bad dodge, but I guess she's not there for a while. Pyra and Myth are both have this, but they only get it turning into the character, or when they leave to turn into the character, not when the other one shows up. So transforming into, but not out of. And they both do not, and pirates, that's it. It's time for the moment we've all been waiting for. This man has way too much. He has way too much. There's too many. He's probably the, one of the most DLC type DLC characters a DLC could ever DLC. He has one ground move that does not have intangibility, and that is the the, the jab, the 10 hit and the two ones. So let's get on. Oh gosh. Uh, honestly, it's faster to say what he doesn't have intangibility on. Forward air, back air, down air, nair. For some reason, they thought it was necessary for him to have up air intangibility. This move is already really good. I've always considered it a snake up to younger brother. It is frame four. Snakes is frame six. It's got this intangibility, which means that it can shield break and it kills, and it does way, way too much damage. This move is stupid. And, 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 if you're lucky, you can combo it into itself. Let's see. Boom. This move is dumb. Not as dumb as Mario, he's dead. The other moves that don't have intangibility are neutral special, up special, down B. However, down B does get when you land the hit. Oh, yeah. Your opponent goes green. It's a pretty common thing with the command grab type moves. Saibi gets intangibility on the ground for these four frames, then he launches, so you get none of that in the air. Zoom. He zoomed it. Forward smash. Hilariously, his strong the strongest forward smash in the game does not have any intangibility. It's funny because every other all his other smash attacks have it, but this one uh, trades that for... Where are you at? All the super armor. Yeah, what hasn't been said about Kazuya and his stupid intangibility? Let's just let's just go through him. Crouching jab, down tilt, down forward tilt, down back tilt, crouching down back tilt, crouching down for down forward tilt, back tilt, up back tilt, up tilt, up tilt. Actually, it's pretty interesting because if you it has two of them, right? One and two. You can delay the second hit, but still get all the intangibility. But if you were to if you buffer the attack, you just the intangibility never ends, and that's just kind of kind of fun. Unlike up tilt, his down forward tilt, his tsunami kick, does cannot have that endless intangibility where he just stays blue. This one has to have a break in between the first hit and the second hit. 
Also, uh, up forward tilt. Only the first hit has intangibility on his legs. Bam. And then the rest is, you know. Forward tilt. Oh, here's, here's something funny. Here's something funny. Forward tilt and back tilt are similar. However, forward tilt, just his leg gets intangible. Whereas back tilt, his entire upper half and his leg goes intangible. It, that's stupid. He's got his crouching jab, he's got this, he's got wind god fist, electric wind god fist. Oh, here's something. Wind god fist, just upper body and into his arm. Whereas electric wind god fist, they give him full body intangibility. So not only is this move better in power by 1% and a hit stun combo ability, it's also just a better move in general. His down smash has got intangibility right on the arm when the hitbox comes out because obviously he needs this. He needs all the help he can get. He got up smash. Intangibility on the arm again. Oh geez, that lingers. His movement option, a movement option has intangibility, so that's that's great, that's fun. Left splits kick, this has a thing as well, his double dash attack. His dash attack, oh my gosh. His dash attack has intangibility. On both of his legs, when he's jumping and then it leaves and then I get it comes back, but not on his attacking leg. I guess this is so it's better on shorter opponents. Down smash, up smash, super armor, or damage based armor, 6% of it, which is exactly this. Or you can just punch it out, I guess. And this is 10%. Down special has a... Where are you at? Come on, you got... There it is, there it is. Another 10% damage based armor. I'm pretty sure this comes out frame one, so that's fun. Everybody, when they grab, they go into this greenness, but Kazuya has interesting grabs. Up throw, however, even though it does make him go green at first, you can hit him right here before the beam comes out. So in a doubles match, or maybe if you're, you somehow planted a C4 at just the right time, you could technically save yourself. It's really unlikely, but all of that is time to hit him before he shoots the beam. We've got his this thing. Oh. And we have, of course, Dragon Uppercut. This one's interesting because it transitions out of the step dash. So his first step dash, then he goes full body intangibility. So if I were to let go now, he could do one of the Wind God Fists. And now it's now registered Dragon Uppercut. So that one frame, no one's gonna hit that into the upper body intangibility. He's now crouched, which is good luck hitting his legs like this, into full body intangibility all the way until the hitbox comes out. Transitions to upper body intangibility all the way until the move is out. His rage mechanics. Usually when you grab someone with rage or with, with the this, you know, his command grab thing, there is no intangibility. He doesn't get green and neither does the opponent he grabs until he's landed the hit on the ground. With rage drive, however, he gets full body invincibility. If you got hit by this, there is no escape. You are done. And I'm not sure what the intention is of this part. On the way down, some for some reason they make the opponent go green. I'm not sure how this changes anything. He goes full green all the way until the hit, and then for some reason he switches, but Kazuya stays green, so that's... You know, they're, they're wacky. Because I have Rage Drive, Down B now transitions into frame 1 intangibility for those three frames, because it's now trying to do, do the Rage Drive instead of its usual what's it heaven's door is that what it's called yeah rage rage dive rage drive rage one of one of them but then it, it's a uh, it works the exact same way all the greens yeah there it is super armor on down beat his heavy armor his 10 percent damage based heavy armor now transitions into super armor the command input version which also has super armor this one is just stronger it's dumb how much power he gets while already being one of the strongest characters in the game just based on raw power. Just if you're doing a move on Kazuya and you're not in the air, just expect it to to be intangible. And that's that's Kazuya, the greatest mad lad of intangibility. He's basically blue the character. And now we're back to he's he's the least DLC of DLCs. His down smash on release frame 1. Frame 1 intangibility, full body intangibility for 3 frames or 4 frames transitions into lower half intangibility. One, two, three. Oh wow, yeah. So just just do it right away. You have frame three intangibility, and you can just use this to, of course, reach. It's stupid. That's a, that's that's a DLC move right there. But that's his only one. Unexpectedly for his uh, his intangibility, he gets it on his dash attack. Just the leg. Like every sword fighter that's come before him, his downbeat counter has intangibility. For two frames without a hit, and then for the entire animation, if he does land it. The reflected version and the attack 
counterattack version use the exact same uh, animation and such, so you get the same amount of intangibility. And that, that's it. That's all he's got. With that, everybody's done. That's everybody's blues and green moves. That was a lot of characters. That was a lot of moves. A lot of rando blues and greens to come out of nowhere but now it's finally done all the dlc all the main roster yeah and that'll be everything i've got for you today so if you like the video like the video subscribe leave a comment notification bell on and i will see you next time goodbye i want to do this thing you must see this it is very important bye